Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. Friday's DRF race of the day kicks off a pick five at Penn National on a huge afternoon slash evening of racing there. Race number six is the grade to $400,000 Penn Mile. This race is for three-year-olds. Let's take a look at this field. You can scan the QR code for race of the day access on your mobile devices. You can view free formulator past performances on the race of the day event page at drf.com. You can bet this race in this car with your DRF bets account, which includes free formulator PPs. And Mike, this race marks the return of Annapolis, two for two last year on turf for Todd Pletcher. And if not for an unfortunate injury at the wrong time, he would have been one of the favorites for the Breeders' Cup juvenile turf. Yeah, exactly. He was he looked really good winning um, each of his two starts as a two year old. Um, and he actually earned a, a very nice figure when he won that pilgrim. It was only a four horse field, Dan, and he only won it by a head. Um, but that was a really good performance from this source. And you're right. It's very unfortunate that we didn't, we didn't get to see him after that. He is adaptable from a pace standpoint, which is always a good sign. We'll throw up the Timeform U.S. pace projector. Our friends at Timeform U.S. have uncaptured spirit up front. I talked to Mark Schumann. Mark Schumann agrees with the Timeform U.S. pace projector. He told me if you run with uncaptured spirit early in this race, you're going to be going too fast. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, he's supposed to be on the lead in here. Uh, the number six, Witty, is another horse um, stretching out here for the first time. He's been sprinting on the main track. He's got some turf pedigree, though. Um, he wasn't, you know, a blazer on the main track, but I expect he'll be forward in this race. But yeah, I won't argue with this pace projector with the three on top. We see Annapolis in mid-pack. He came from off the pace to win his career debut at Saratoga. Looked very, very good doing it. And talking a little bit about him, he just has that beautiful pedigree. It's just like the old days with Todd. You've got the great pedigree. You've got the performance. And let's watch his second start. This is the grade two pillar. Mike mentioned it was only a four horse field. The pace wasn't necessarily fast, but he got right up close. The portfolio company, the horse on the lead, he battled this horse all the way down to the line. And Annapolis was always getting the better. The third and fourth place finishers also ran in this race. Both came back to win. Yeah, this is just a good performance. They had to maybe take him out of his preferred style a little bit to stay close to the pace, but he just stayed very strongly in here, Dan. And you're right. He always had the measure of portfolio company there in the stretch um, to that runner up's credit there. He fought very gamely, but uh, Annapolis was just too good. Um, this horse looks, looks very, very good in both of his starts last year. You just sort of have to hope um, now that he's able to deliver on that potential, even with the injury that sidelined him. I talked to Todd earlier this week. They said they cleaned up a hind ankle with some surgery, hasn't missed a beat since. And they like the inside post with the source. They just think this is a very good spot. They had a couple of choices. They had the seven for a long Paradise Creek, thought that was too sharp. They got the mile and an eighth race coming up at Belmont off the layoff. That seemed a little too far. This race seems just right for Annapolis. Uh, Todd seems confident. And why not after what we've seen in two starts? Wow, what a summer is the number two going out for Chuck Lawrence. This horse sprinted off the layoff. And I have a feeling last time out at Laurel, that race was nothing more than a sprint, Mike. He got uh, uh, a nice closers trip all in all. The pace was fast. He was able to save some ground. He benefits fitness-wise. The question is, is he good enough? Yeah, that's a big question, too. Um, I did like the return race for him, though. I thought it was probably a perfect setup uh, for this next step, whatever it was going to be. They turn up here. It's a pretty tough spot, I think, for this horse. Um, but I'm sure they got just what they wanted out of it, Dan. But like you, I'm just not sure he's good enough. He's never finished first in a race. Talked to Schumann earlier this week about uncaptured spirit. He'd always wanted to try the source on the turf. He scored first time turf sprinting. Last time out on the Murphy, he thought he was going to be loose on the lead. And he was very surprised and very upset when a big long shot battled the source early. That big long shot ended up finishing last, I think. But it took the starch out of uncaptured spirit who ran pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess, um, you know, just having to take on that early pressure in that race. And he was just sort of forced along up there by that long shot you were talking about. They were clear of everyone else. Um, you know, the flip side of that is, and he did put that horse away relatively easily. The flip side of that is uh, when the horses that were sitting just behind came for at the top of the stretch, uncaptured spirit was no match for that field. I mean, maybe it was enough of an excuse um, just having to go that fast on the lead. I I don't know if I'm necessarily going to buy into that yet. I think this is an even tougher race than that one. Um, he's, to me, he's just going to have to run a lot better. The number four is 02035, who finished third in his 10th start last time out. And we're going to take a look at that race. It's a first level allowance, and it's his second start off of a little bit of a layoff. 
02035, save ground early. We see him angling out right now to split horses four wide, and he comes with an okay finish to finish third. The fifth place horse came back to run second in the Jersey Derby with an 81 buyer. This is a useful horse. I just wonder how much upside is left after 10 starts. Yeah, I worry about that too. He ran fine in here. I didn't necessarily see the big excuse. I thought all in all the trip was was okay for this horse. He did have that rival there, the 10, just sort of right alongside him all through the stretch. And sometimes that can be uncomfortable. Um, this horse did get third by a by a, a nose in there. Um, but he just never looked like he was winning, Dan. I don't know that the blinkers on made that big a difference in that race. Um, I will say this, two starts back in the Woodhaven. Um, that, this horse ran a lot better than it looks that day. He did not have a great trip in that race. Um, and I like in, on that, in that spot where they just sort of took him back and wound up making run one. I think that's a better style for this horse. Maybe they'll do that here. First time turf for the five, no need to worry. He's 20 to one on the morning line. He was in against Joe last time out in the Tessio. Joe handled turf when he returned to it to win the Murphy at Pimlico. I don't know, Mike. I, I wish there was a little bit more turf pedigree with this one. Yeah, I didn't see enough turf pedigree to get interested either. Because at the end of the day, Dan, uh, big price or not, he's just got to be way better on turf than he is on dirt. Um, and the pedigree doesn't suggest that he's going to be able to do that. Conversely, the number six, Witty, does have turf pedigree for his turf debut. This is a half-brother to Caravelle, who's a grade three stakes winner, albeit sprinting. So it'll be interesting to see if Witty can handle stretching out to the mile for the first time. He's won his last three races on the main track by open lengths. I talked to McLean Hendricks earlier this week, asked him about the layoff. He said it was by design. He said this is just a big, growthy three-year-old who was overdeveloped and needed time. Okay, yeah. To me, he's sort of the most interesting wild card in the race, and a horse that I would like to use somewhere if his if his price stays up. And he's not the kind of horse I would be interested in if he takes money in here. But if he's a big price, I'll try to use him because he does have enough turf pedigree, and I like all of his dirt races. Red Danger showed a lot of heart when he won the pulpit as his final start as a two-year-old. He kind of was shoulder to shoulder with the runner-up in the stretch, and he got up to win that race by a head. Now, last time out in the American turf, just a change of tactics. He was up close to a pretty fast pace, and he paid the price. I talked to Brian Lynch. He also thinks a mile and a 16 is a little too far for him. He likes this horse on the cutback to a mile, and he said they're taking him back and making one run this time. Yeah, that's probably his preferred style. He did run okay last time. Um, I don't know that I gave him you know, a huge excuse in that race, but maybe that's just the wrong style for him. My problem with this, Dan, is I, I don't necessarily love any of his other races all that much. I know he's a stakes winner on the turf. That's a good thing. He's got some figures that put him in range. Um, I don't know. He ran in the Cutler Bay and the Palm Beach earlier this year. I didn't think he ran that well in either of those races. Fort Washington is the number eight, and he completes this field for Shug McGahee and Flavian Pratt. This horse lightly raced. This will only be his fifth lifetime start. Let's watch his most recent effort. This is the Woodhaven. He ran in spots in this race, Mike. Right around here, he made this bold three-wide move on the turn. He didn't have cover for much of this race. He was three-wide around, and now he kind of just idles a little bit before he gets to this leader. He's going to get passed by the favored winner, and then eventually he's going to come back and get the pace setter for second. I talked to Shug earlier this week he says this horse probably wants to go a little bit longer and he's still figuring it out yeah it does look like he's still figuring it out i agree that um longer distances could be better um he, he's a horse who could easily improve again here though dan i I'll, I'll be honest i really liked him in the woodhaven i thought that was a great spot for him off of the three-year-old debut at tampa where i just felt like they were giving him that race uh, to get him into shape and he ran okay in the woodhaven but as you've already laid out it looked like he had dead aim at the top of the stretch he went nowhere and then he just got up for second after that really impressive winner blew his doors off there. I don't know. He could take another step forward here. Um, I just don't know if I would necessarily want him as the second choice. He did finish ahead of Sean Su in that last race, who came back to run third in the Paradise Creek the other day, 85 buyer speed figure. Uh, before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel. Access to all of DRF TV's video offerings time for our top picks for the friday race of the day kicking off the pick five annapolis is just simply way the horse to beat mike i think he's going to take a ton of money and i think he's going to take some beating yeah i do too i mean i had it down to the one and the eight it feels like they're the two favorites in here dan um i sided with annapolis uh, but i have no problem with anybody who thinks that fort washington could beat him here because the layoff uh, has to be a big concern at a short price
the Port Washington does have two races off the short layoff for Shug, and I'd like to see him get covered up this time and try to make one strong run. But talking to Shug, and you agree, he seems like he may want to go longer, so maybe he's a kind of horse for a race like the Hall of Fame at Saratoga this year. I'll keep an eye on Fort Washington. 8137 for me, 1846 for Mike. It's the grade two Penn Mile. It's the feature on a really nice stakes-laden card at Penn National. Good luck.